You got it this time. Hello, hello, hello to everyone who might be watching out there. I'm so excited to see you. I'm Gigi M. Green. Thank you so much for joining in the first. Twitch is back up. Thank you so much. Thank you for joining in the first live stream here on HAPS TV. I'm so excited. Yes. So little housekeeping. If you see me looking over here, can you see my fingers? There they are. Here we go. It's because I am trying to monitor two laptops at the same time. I got Twitch and Twitter and hopefully Facebook Live going on this side. And on this laptop, I have HAPS TV. So today we have the wonderful comedy writer, Margo Newcomer. Woohoo! Thank you so much for having me, Gigi. Absolutely. I am so honored that you are here today. Thank you for walking this journey with me. We are going to figure it out. So let me give you a little background on this wonderful writer. Here we go. So Margot Newcomer is a writer based in Los Angeles who specializes in fish out of water comedies about women who are thrown a curveball by life and must adapt to survive. She is originally from Kansas City, love the Midwest, yes, and received her MFA in screenwriting from the University of Texas. Since her move to LA, she has written on sketch comedy teams and placed in screenwriting competitions such as Austin Film Festival, Writers on the Verge, Final Draft's Big Break. I know you've heard of some of those. She's currently, um, she currently has a half hour television comedy pilot on Coverfly's Red List and rated in the top 1%. See what I mean? Let's give it up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm so proud of you. I am so proud of you. So we're gonna start it off with a super duper, just fun question. Icebreaker, here we go. What's your favorite ice cream? <laughs> <laughs> My favorite ice cream is just the old school Haagen-Dazs coffee. Ooh. I don't think there's anything better, but I do love ice cream. So I was a swimmer and it's this big joke that swimmers just all are obsessed with ice cream. So I'm not picky, but ooh, a Haagen-Dazs coffee, there's not much better than that. I haven't had haagen in so long. I used to be one of those, um, I would eat the whole pint. <laughs> I would eat the whole pint and I didn't even know there was anything wrong with that. I was like, what do you mean? It's a couple of scoops. <laughs> Exactly. So, um, for me, it would be the old school Neapolitan, a little bit of chocolate, a little vanilla, a little strawberry. That's good for yeah. me. <laughs> like three in one, there's nothing better. You know? So we will go ahead and get started. We don't even have a name yet for this series, but it's going to be all about writing. I have different guests all the time and given their takes on writing, tips on writing advice, how they started. Because we want to help people who are starting out, who need a little help. I know there's so many rooms that talk about the big wigs and big ups for them because I love them too. Whether it's Aaron Sorkin or Shonda Rhimes, we all look up to them. But once again, we want to talk to the people who are just starting out and who need a little help and have some fun with writing. So come back, join us. I hope you find some value. Once again, for any new people, if you see me looking over here, it's because I'm trying to make sure I don't miss anybody in Twitch. Hello, I am so glad you are here and we're happy to have you. Um, Facebook, Twitter, and YouTube as well. So we're gonna get started with, first, tell us a little bit about your journey. I love that you are not from LA. What was it like coming to LA? Um, to follow your dream and to be a writer. Yeah, so I actually, for a long time, I discovered screenwriting in college, but I feel like for a great many years, I kind of had a dual path where um, I swim in college and was a swim coach. And that always was like the easier path. Like I was good at it. And, you know, my aunt was a swim coach. My mom was a swim coach. It kind of always, made the most sense. I had the most opportunity through that. Um, so I kind of always was walking like one foot 
in the swimming world and one foot in the writing world. And um, I had a really great coaching job in Austin, Texas. And, um, but the best part of my day was always kind of when I was writing my script, you know, those two hours during the day when I was just, Mm -hmm. and as much as I love the kids and I enjoyed coaching, that was always the best part of my day. Um, And Austin has this, they're known for Austin Film Festival, which is amazing, but they also have this, another really great festival called ATX, which is just TV writing and it's much smaller. Um, It's in June. It's really great. So I actually went to that and it was, you know, you're just in, it's much smaller, it's much more intimate. And I was listening to these writers talk and I just kind of had this like epiphany moment of like, what am I doing? (laughs) I know that writing TV is what I really want to do. Um, and I kind of, I'm at this point in my life, I kind of have to like go for it. I don't think I'll ever be all in on this dream. Um, so a little over three years ago, yeah, it took me, I will say it did take me almost a year to kind of prepare myself and to make the leap. So it wasn't immediate, but I finally was like, I need to do this. So I took my steps and I moved here a little over three years ago. <laughs> and um, yeah, it's been a, it's been a journey. There's been a lot of a steep learning curve, but yeah. Um, yeah, also half of it's been the pandemic, <laughs> which has also been interesting. But I'm really glad I made that choice. Mm-hmm. And um, even though it's definitely a challenge breaking in, it's I'm, I'm glad I did it. Thank you for sharing that. I think so many people um, come to L.A. and they feel like, OK, I'm going to be a star. And they don't really talk about the grind that it takes. Um, So there's so much loneliness in LA and we'll talk about that too, how how we all cope with that um, a little later. But I'd love to hear more about when you got to LA, did you think it was gonna be what you thought? So here's the, it's actually, I think for me, it was a little better because I did come out here for an internship while I was um, getting my MFA at the University of Texas. Um, and I struggled and I didn't love LA. So mm-hmm. I was actually expecting to come out here and kind of have those same feelings. Um, and I was pleasantly surprised. I do think it helped where, like, you know, driving, you have the podcast now and all that stuff. But, um, I think knowing kind of what it was before and preparing myself that this, I think I had more realistic expectations the second round because I knew coming out, I was like, this is going to be hard. This isn't going to be some sparkly during that happens overnight. So that mm-hmm. made the second time much easier to move out. Now it's still isn't easy. <laughs> wow. um, <laughs> but I think also being a little bit older and, knowing like the types of friends that I want and um, trying to surround myself with good people that has made it much easier. It has made it easier, not easy, but easier. Absolutely. And I'm glad you brought that up about the internship because was that your first job um, in the field? Was that your first? And do you even count internships as a first job? I have my own opinion on that, but I'd love to hear yours. So it's interesting. I actually had two fantastic internships. I um, was very lucky in that because I was in Austin. So I was reading for Austin Film Festival before the internships. And I also was a TA. So Mm -hmm. I I feel like I had kind of a little bit of experience. Um, And my two internships were just as a reader. So that was my only job. So I was just reading a ton of scripts and writing coverage. Um, and one was on the WB lot, which was awesome. Like, I loved it. I loved getting to like walk in and um, just kind of see all these things that the sets that I had grown up seeing. Um, they were also filming Shameless at the time, even though it was in the summer. So it was funny to like see all the trash bags everywhere <laughs> and realize it was a prop. Um, and then the other one, it was the production company that made Predator. So they had this massive Predator as you walked in and you'd be like, hey, Predator. So actually both experiences were were really good. But I, again, it was just as a reader. So um, I 
Yeah, I don't know. For internships, it's a challenge because I feel like there is an area to really learn a lot. But I can also, I think you have to be careful because there, you can get yourself in like exploitative situations. So I think you have to be a little careful. I got very lucky with, with my two. It's funny. So my first job, and I do count um, internships as your first job. I didn't understand how important they were. Um, my first job in uh, Hollywood was I was a intern at a production office. <laughs> and I can't believe I'm sharing this story, <laughs> but it may help someone. My first job was as an intern at a production company. I will uh, remain nameless <laughs> on that. Um, and they were uh, preparing a script for <laughs> Bing Rames, um, the actor. And they, they told me, you know, read the script and take it home and do coverage. Now, I was an intern. I didn't even know what coverage was. I didn't even know what to do, what they were talking about it, what they were talking about, but I didn't want to lose the job. I didn't. <laughs> so I took the script home. I did read it. Um, I wrote some of the things that I felt like uh, had holes. There were some flaws because um, I also went to school. My undergrad is in arts and performance. And then, of course, my master's is in law. But so I had training in writing. But this was my first actual job. I didn't know what was expected of me. So <laughs> I wrote the notes and about halfway through the script, I was bored and I felt bad, but I was like, they're not going to notice. They're not going to notice. So I probably read about 75% of it. So when I got back the next day, they were like, how'd you like the script? Tell me about it. And I was like, oh, you know, this, this, and this happens, dot, dot, dot. And I remember him saying something like, well, what do you think about the gas station scene or something like that? And I was like, oh, shoot, I don't remember a gas station scene. And still to this day, I don't even think there was a gas station scene in the script, but I think he was doing that thing to see if I really read it. But I was young. I didn't know. So I said, oh, yeah, it was great. It was great. You know, the gas station scene and, you know, and then the car and, you know, I really didn't like how they acted, you know, it, and then he said, why are you lying to me? And I went, I'm so sorry. I didn't like the script. I didn't know what to do. And he was like, but you shouldn't have lied. And that was my biggest lesson. But I didn't take interning seriously. Fortunately, I got another internship and I was the first one there, <laughs> last one to leave, that whole thing. It taught me so much about just having integrity and just saying, hey, I don't know what to do here. Can you help me? So that, that would be one of the tips <laughs> I would say. Uh, try not to make that mistake. Fortunately, I was able to get paying jobs after that and I was able to move on, but that was scary. So thank you for sharing about your first job because I didn't handle mine correctly. <laughs> It is kind of funny that um, oh, it's my internet connection is unstable. I hope I hope everything is okay. Let me know if it's like delayed or or whatnot. Oh, it pops back up to better. But it's funny because okay. I had the exact opposite where I did learn later. I think how to more gently give notes because I think I was I don't know Midwest. I don't know. I'm super. I was just super earnest. So mm -hmm. when they asked me about this script they were working on, um, and I was just like, I don't know any woman that would want, because it was a rom-com, and I was like, I don't know any woman that would want to marry this dude. And I was like, I don't get it. And it was like dead air, because I was just way too blunt about it, I think. Um, mm -hmm. So I kind of had the opposite, opposite experience, or then I learned like, oh, like, you need to give notes, but you need to kind of finesse it a little bit, not just be like 
super, super blunt, like, no real woman would ever date this man. You don't know what you don't know. You know? Yeah. We don't know <laughs> I love that. Um, yes. So learning to be honest, having integrity, maybe not saying the first thing we're thinking, you know, maybe that keeping that to ourselves. Um, we mentioned earlier about uh, when you move to LA by yourself and as in maybe if you do have family there, maybe you're not close or you're, this is a whole new thing. So new friendships. How did you handle self-care as a writer? Ooh, that's a, that's a good question. That's a tough question. Um, it's something that I'm still, I think, working on because mm -hmm. um, especially having a full-time job that currently is not in the writing industry and mm -hmm. learning to self-care that way, because it really is, learning to count writing as a job. So realizing, oh, I'm spending all these t hours with like no time off. Yeah. So that's been a big thing with self-care is acting as if writing, well, no, writing is a job, even if I'm not getting paid for it. Mm -hmm. um, so learning that I need to take a break, like have days where I, go and do something fun. And I think when I first moved here, there is that pressure, like I have given up a good job. I've given up my friends and, um, cause I moved here and really didn't, I think I knew one person. Um, so there was that pressure of like, oh my God, I have to like somehow make this work and forgetting that like, oh, like it's okay to go out and, have like a day at the beach and just enjoy myself. And I don't have to like feel bad that I'm not writing today. <laughs> um, so I think that's been my biggest form of self-care is just um, letting myself count writing, or not, that's a weird way to phrase it, um, counting writing as a job and then letting myself have time off um, and just have like brain recovery. <laughs> <laughs> but then the second biggest thing too is finding people that are genuinely good people that are rooting for you. So like finding you as a friend was a big part of self-care for me. Um, <laughs> just people that genuinely like you. And um, I know this is going to sound, this might sound counterproductive, but I love being around writers who I can, that I don't have to talk about writing with that I have a genuine human connection with. Mm -hmm. And it's not about quote unquote networking. It's just finding people that you have similar interests with that you like as human beings. I love that. So many times, um, whether you're trying to do writing or, or directing or, or whatever you go to Hollywood for, I find that becomes almost just as hard as the self-care in itself. Finding people that don't want to talk about writing 24 hours a day. You know, if you are, um, you have a group that you want to be with, you need those outlets. So going to the beach just to go to the beach, you know, not to, you know, this may be a good scene. You know what I mean? Like this might be something on a good place where we can, we can shoot something. It's like, no, right now we're just going to lay out. <laughs> That's all we're doing. That's all we're here for or just grabbing coffee to grab coffee, or just going to the movie to go to the movie. I understand that um, <clears throat> and can relate to that very much. So thank you for saying that. I know one of the things that I, I had to learn for my self-care is learning to say no. When I first got to LA, I was trying to go to every mixer there was. I gotta meet people. I gotta, I gotta be in the mix. They gotta know me. And it got to the point I was networking. Here we go. Here are my air quotes. <laughs> I was networking more than I was actually writing. So when I was um, meeting people and they would say, oh, OK, I'm interested. What do you have? Oh, I have a half a script written because I've been doing so much networking or I have something in first draft. Can I send it to you in a couple months? You know, and instead, I really should have been working on my portfolio um, getting my drafts out, um, working on my pitching, working on my log lines, because the networking will come, you know, but you got to have the product in order to get the job. 
And so that was a, another lesson I had to learn for my self-care as well, like learning to say no. Um, I can't come to your party. I can't come to your mixer. I want to, but I really need to get this script done so I can actually get a job, which led to me actually getting a job, you know? So I appreciate that. Thank you. Um, what are some lessons um, that you learned about writing when it comes to the craft of writing? So whether it be outlining or whether it be learning about structure, what are some lessons that you learned that have really helped you? That is such a good question. And I do want to say that I feel like I'm still learning. Um, and I think that's a big lesson of um, I just continually trying to find tools to make my writing better. So um, just that constant learning and learning from other people. And then kind of in combination with that, um, I don't believe that there's one way to write. Mm -hmm. I think that your goal needs to be to find the best way for you to write, like each individual person. Um, and so every time I listen to someone, I, I'm like, oh, that's really interesting. Like note cards, like outlining with note cards. And I was like, okay, I'll put that in my little pocket and I'll have that as a tool later. And that's usually how I kind of avoid, um, I, writer's block. I had a teacher, like, I had a professor that's like, didn't, like, don't let yourself believe in writer's block. <laughs> like, don't even let yourself believe that's a thing. So anytime I like stall out or, um, feel less productive, what I realized too is, oh, I can try something different. So like, mm -hmm. oh, I there's this different tool of like, maybe I um, freeform write. So instead of just going, you know, instead of going outline to pages, maybe I just write it in like the story in a paragraph or, um, but I also do believe that people shouldn't feel bad if something doesn't work for them. Like I am not a morning pages person. And mm -hmm. I know that there are people that swear by it and that is fantastic, but I don't think you should force yourself into things that you should do if they don't work for you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, so that's, I would say that's my number one piece of advice is, yeah, find, find your process that works for you and just keep learning and take, like, uh, taking classes and read it. Oh, read lots of scripts. I know that's like the most cliche yes. thing <laughs> and people say it over and over, but it's one of those things that people say over and over because it's true. Mm. Mm. That's big and very helpful. I, um, I love that. There is, there are so many things I felt like I wanted to write. When I first got to LA, I was like, oh, I can be a, a comedy, drama, sci-fi, dramedy, um, horror. I can do it all, you know? And what I had to learn, one of my biggest lessons is knowing what kind of writer I am. Because for one, it'll be easier for me to pitch myself. <clears throat> Excuse me. But um, it'll also be easier for me to actually finish the script. We brought up a little bit about writer's block. Sometimes when I feel like I'm blocked, um, it's because I'm really not invested in the script from the beginning, you know? And when I'm trying to be all things and do all things, um, I find the script that really speaks to me or the type of writing that I really enjoy, I can get through it. And when I'm trying to go a little too, too left or right of center, I struggle. So, um, what I mean by that specifically, too, is knowing knowing my strength. So with writing, when I am um, when I am writing a drama, I know my strengths are dysfunctional families, or and that could be families as in your co-working family, your group, you know, uh, your actual family or friendships that are like family, um, but the dysfunction of it, the, the subtext of it, the, the unsaid, you know, that's my strength. When I try to write about things that 
are out of that element and it can still be in um, the form of a family or a group. But when I try to write about things that are super joyful, like a, a family film or something, I struggle because I'm like, oh, what, what would I have the character do now? Oh, there, there's a murder. Oh no, I can't do that. And the, you know, <laughs> so I had to learn one of my biggest lessons are where is my strong point? Where's my strength? Where it, where, what am I good at? And then if I can put that type of writing in the script, I'll be okay. If there's something dysfunctional in an action film, I can do it. Something that is broken, a family that's broken, a friendship that's broken in a comedy, I can do it. I'm not great at writing um, happily ever after. That's not my wheelhouse, you know? So I have to say, hey, you do that much better than I do. Go ahead and knock it out the park. I won't knock it out the park, you know? And for a long time, I thought something was wrong with me because I was like, oh, I'm a writer. I should be able to write everything. And I'm like, no, I write this well. I can do this, but it won't be as good as this over here, you know? And that's okay. Um, so yeah, that's one of my my biggest lessons. Um, I... <laughs> What do you feel like you you think new writers struggle with the most? Is it oh, structure? Is it um, pitching? Is it? I know you mentioned read more scripts. Do you feel um, more writers that are that really want to get into this should take more time before they even start writing their first script? What do you think about that? What do you think they struggle with the most? That's a really good question, and that's a hard. Uh, whew, I'm gonna. <laughs> I want to try to be as thoughtful with it as well because I also have had, I've had people, new writers, want me to um, read something, and it is that it's challenging because you're like, oh, I never want to crush anyone's dream, but I also, you know, I don't have time to teach someone for free like a course in screenwriting 101. Um, so I would say if you're a new screenwriter, yes, exactly what you said, Gigi. Number one, take the time, read scripts. Also know like what scripts you're reading. So if you're reading, um, and I think I want to say alien is one where like he knew he was going to direct it. If so it's a writer director, those are maybe not the best to read because it is also a big budget, right? It's someone famous. Um, mm -hmm. those might not be the types of, of scripts to read, but like, like Groundhog Day is an amazing script. <laughs> um, yeah. uh, Little Miss Sunshine, you know, there's so many great scripts and I know like the writers, um, GA library has, a, there's online, there's a ton of places. So yes, number one, read a ton of scripts. I would do some sort of, um, reading, like whether it's a book or it's a, you know, now it's great with Zoom because some classes that weren't available to people all around the country, they're, they're now available because everything is remote. So that's actually a really, um, I think a benefit of Zoom is it makes it more available. Um, and there's, there's a lot of great people that you can take from, but yeah, I would uh, take the time to kind of learn it. And then the other really big thing um, is, uh, know where your story is going. Oh, that's great. Um, so know the ending. And if you know the ending and you know where your story is going, it is going to make it so much easier to um, work towards that goal. Because that's the one big thing about screenwriting, right? Is that everything has to be like moving forward. It's really um, unlike plays where you can just really sit in the moment and like, Let's have this meaty, like, 10-minute scene where we just talk stuff out <laughs> and really delve in. Like, you really it, it's, you really can't do that as much in screen. I'm sure there's always exceptions. Mm -hmm. um, so the idea of always moving forward. So know where you're going, where the end is. Um, make sure it, it feels active. And then the other um, big thing is find readers that you trust. 
-hmm. So I think that because they're going to give you good feedback. And I think that is really important. Um, find the people that know how to give notes back that um, kind of know your sensibilities. Um, the other, <laughs> this is something that I wish I would have done more as a new writer. Uh, okay. Write your log line first. Nice. I have a tendency to write it last. <laughs> um, and uh, yeah, I am like, oh my gosh, if you write your log line first, that can answer so many questions or you can find so many holes. I don't know. So it's like, yeah, one other piece of advice I would give for a new writer. And don't get Great. um don't get discouraged. You're gonna have to write and write and write like so you're so rarely is your first script gonna be be the script that has you break into the industry yes so just keep writing what is is it uh malcolm gladwell that talks about the ten thousand hours i think so yeah yes so definitely your first script i mean ma'am um when i go back and read my first script <laughs> I can laugh now, but at the time I was like, this is great. <laughs> you know, this is, this is my Hollywood ticket right here. And now I read it and I go, oh boy. <laughs> but I love it because I'm, I'm proud that I took a stab at it. You know, I said, I didn't really know what I was doing, but I had a story in my head and I, I actually wrote it and finished it. And I'm proud that I accomplished that. So yeah, I, I love what you said about the first script. Um, I'm going to definitely look over here for a second and say, hello, welcome to the Twitch audience. I'm so glad you're here. We are talking with wonderful comedy writer, Margot Newcomer. We are talking about all things writing. This is my first live stream, so I am glad you are here. Welcome, welcome, welcome to the new listeners and watchers on HAPS TV. Welcome, welcome, welcome. We are so glad you are here. Thank you for walking this very first journey with me being live. And I hope you are finding, um, finding some value out of this. Um, I wanted to start a series where we could talk about writing and all things writing for the new writers who are interested in writing for TV, um, now since my internet um, connection is unstable, writing for TV or, okay, I'm back, writing for TV or writing in general, whether you are interested in writing for plays or film, or I just wanted to have a safe space where new writers could come and get some information, ask some questions if you have them and find value. Because I know many times, um, whether it's um, different programs or organizations, they will have webinars and it's usually the ones that are already there. They've already made it. And I love that. I watch them as well, but we want to help people who are interested and in just starting out also. So my next um, topic I want to talk about is writing out of LA. There's so many people, um, and I'll tie it into one of the lessons that um, I learned as well, and that can hopefully help someone else. Um, everyone says, move to LA, move to LA. And yes, while if you want to write for TV, I still think that is a good decision because the jobs are in LA, even if the production isn't. And I didn't know that at first when I first got to LA. But what I will say, um, is that I don't know if a, a lot of new writers um, value the wealth, the wealth of information wherever they are. It doesn't matter if you are in North Carolina, I am sure there is a college that has a film writing school or a library where you could read um, some plays or scripts, or I bet you there is a writer's group there, you know? There are writers all over the world, wherever you are. And I think making those connections and all of you coming up together is so undervalued. So I would say that um, is something everybody can build on their skills from where they are. And that will even make you better if you do wanna move to LA or New York or wherever. Um, 
I just wish more new writers would take advantage of that. I didn't do it as well. It's a lesson that I had to learn. Um, so if you want to comment on that, feel free. And after my question is, do you think with now after the pandemic and, and things are trying to get back to normal, do you think writers have to move to LA to be successful? That's a really great question. And I also kind of want to um, jump on my jump off of what you were saying in that um, that was actually one of the reasons when I first came for my internship to LA and back to Austin, mm -hmm. because I felt like I needed to find my, vo my voice a little bit. Cause I, you know, you could hear, I got to listen into conversations of like producer producers with writers and like, oh my gosh, how would I answer that question? Or like, <laughs> do I have something I really want to say? Um, so I think that there is something really powerful in cultivating your voice outside of LA. Um, so that way, if you do end up like, because for me, I wanted to be in TV. So I really do still feel like, like you said, TV, it is important to be here. Um, I, I definitely think um, it's changing a little bit because the great part of, from what I've, I don't know, I've been hearing <laughs> is yes. they want, you know, like a wealth of experiences in a room. Mm -hmm. So, you know, if you can get someone even from like another, like I think, you know, you hear like um, England or Canada or New Zealand, um, anywhere in the world, um, you want those unique voices that give you a different perspective. So, it, it, and it seems like a lot of showrunners like the idea of having um, people from all over where they don't have to live in LA. So that's kind of cool. Right. Uh, for features, I do definitely think that you don't have to be in LA. You can live where you live and um, and and write. It, it, the the challenge becomes more when like contacts and and whatnot but um i do oh, think it's mm -hmm. i do think you're able i don't think it's the same that it was before the pandemic because i think you're seeing too like you have m way more classes that are over zoom now and it seems like some people are actually going to mm -hmm. continue that tradition when before the classes were in person like even now that things are opening up they're going to keep doing it um zoom. so that way you can meet people um that you normally wouldn't meet so I don't know. Did that answer the question? I feel like I was a little over the place on that one. I'm sorry. It's a hard, that one's a hard question too, because I feel like no, no one really knows where we're going to be in a year. So, but mm -hmm. I do think if you don't live in LA, do not let that stop you. Um, when I lived in Kansas City, I drove 45 minutes to KU to take uh, screenwriting classes from Kevin Wilmot. Like, there are exactly like you said, there's places online or in person where wherever you are, you can find a way. I think that's lovely. And I agree with you um, as far as TV. How I'll answer that is I think there's so many opportunities now to backdoor into TV. So I think we are getting away from, and this is just you know, one writer's opinion, but I think we are getting away from, we have to be in LA from the start. And I think a better way people might save a little money because it is expensive to live in um, Los Angeles, um, even maybe save a little time on their trajectory in their career might be to um, not be in LA Right on, if you want to be a writer, because this is about writing, write on as many things as you can. I would say, um, and I'm raising both of my hands because I'm doing this as well. Get involved with podcasting, write on other people's audio dramas, um, go to the local theaters and talk to some of the playwrights. Hey, do you need some help with your script? Um, write a book, write a book write a book. I cannot say that enough. Write a book, write a book, write a book. Um, the local um, singers and uh, songwriters help write a song. The more writing that you can do 
and build your um, not only your portfolio, um, but your resume. I just feel like better prepares you for when you do go to L.A. And then when you do get in a writer's room, you you have so much more knowledge. Like you were saying, you have not only knowledge from whatever your background is, but you have knowledge from whatever um, type of writing that you've been able to do. And not everyone is gonna have that. So it automatically elevates you a little higher than other people. And, and many times new writers don't value the experience they already have, you know? And so when I see um, the new shows coming out, especially uh, streaming, when I see the new shows coming out on Netflix or Apple TV or whatever, there are so many shows that are about niche environments. So, you know, um, um, the last book that I wrote uh, about the, well, I won't, I won't say because then you know what it's about, but it's a niche, you know, I'll, I'll do a, um, just a vague one. So when we see the new shows coming out and it's about a photographer who um, travels overseas in journalism, that's a niche, you know, write about that. Like the people that, um, that are looking for the stories, the production companies, the uh, networks and everything, if you can come and you have writing experience, with your background, come on, come on, you know, that's fantastic. That is great. But so many people will say, oh, I don't know. I don't know how you can learn how to write a script. You can learn that writing is a skill that can be learned, but your background, what you bring to the table, your perspective, we, we haven't even talked about that yet. Your, your point of view on the page that's yours. Nobody else has that but you. You know, I come up from a blended family of 10, like so many uh, uh, siblings on my mom's side, sibling on my uh, dad's side. I could talk about that all day if I wanted to. You know what I mean? Like we talk about being from the Midwest. There's a certain way people speak. There's a certain way people think. That yeah. is a background. That is experience that we have in our portfolio, we have in our knowledge that we can say, mm, maybe they, but they might say this, you know, there's a lot of blue collar. They might do this instead of doing that. You know, they might react in this way. That's all valuable. It's valuable stuff. So, Absolutely. Um, no, I was, yeah, you're 100% right. And, um, you, that's one thing that my professor used to say is like, live life. Like you have to, if you don't live your life, you're going to have nothing to write about. Um, and the other thing that I have come across too is I think it used to be very like, you know, writer sample heavy and it still is. You have to have a good sample, but um, you know, now it really is. They want to know more about who you are as a person like tell us your yes. experiences. And that was actually something really interesting at the ATX Film Festival. Um, they were like, it was the, uh, oh my gosh, I totally just blinked on the, <laughs> the wire. Uh, it was writers from the wire mm -hmm. and uh, it was 10 writers and they were telling a story and they're like, yeah, there was this one really great writer but we used to get so frustrated because she wouldn't open up. And then one day she just opened up and told this story this like really messed up story. And I think it became the episode that they sent in for the Emmys. Cause they're like, thank goodness. So like they really, I feel like writer's rooms, they want, they want stories. They want, um, yeah. To know that you've like lived life. So definitely <laughs> I think not living in LA and really working on your craft and finding your voice is um, a great idea. I would never discourage someone from doing that if that's where they felt most comfortable. I love that. You you just have my mind racing. You'll say something and I'm like, oh, that may help someone too. Let's talk about that for a minute. You said um, they want you to tell your stories in the room. And yes, they do. <laughs> that can be a whole nother uh, discussion. Um, what would you say to writers who feel they're introverts? 
I am actually a tricky introvert because for some reason people think I'm extroverted, but I am actually definitely an introvert where I get my energy from being alone. Um, mm. And that's been one struggle too. It's because I, uh, I, I go to a, going to like a writer's mixer with like 60 other writers. That's, <laughs> I get like a panic attack just thinking about it. Yes. Um, mm -hmm. So I think don't, try to turn yourself into someone that you're not, um, mm. that you don't have to do that. You can, you can still be an introvert, but, um, you know, just try to work on little, like you, you definitely have to work on opening up, but like everyone does it in their own way. Like do it in the way that still feels truest to yourself. I would say that's the most important thing is like be yourself, never feel like you're trying to turn into someone else um because i think people it's really and i i don't know i get this and i could be wrong because that's another thing too like no 100 percent knows what they're doing um mm -hmm. but one thing i do feel like is people are drawn to people that feel like authentic so yeah. even if you're an introvert and you're quiet and um you don't and i and i have heard stories like you don't always have to be the loudest in the room but if when you give a suggestion it's really like on point um that is always appreciated from what i've heard so yeah i would just say the number one thing is you can always grow and try to be better but never lose who you are you don't have to become someone that you're not so if you're an introvert it's totally cool there's a ton of us out here um but yeah you you're going to find ways to let people know who you are, but don't mm -hmm. lose sight of who you are. I love that. It made me think of people say, fake it till you make it. And I always think, no, you don't need to fake it. I also am a introvert who pretends, I pretend <laughs> to be an extrovert. I remember um, when I was saying, hey, um, get on this live stream with me. And I said, we're just going to have a conversation. And in my head, as I'm thinking, oh, I'm so nervous. I'm this, you know, oh, so many people. And, and I love what you said about going into a room of people. It drains my energy. I feel like, oh, I need to go back home so I can <laughs> get my energy back because I am introverted. Um, but yes, one of the things that I also find helpful as an introvert is I try to just add one more thing a day. So whether it's instead of being in a room of people, maybe I'll go on a webinar or maybe I'll go on a um, a, a, a Zoom or something where I'm not necessarily face to face with people, but I am around people and I can work on being a little bit more um, open. I had to work on that. Uh, the very first time in a writer's room, it was strange to me that people were sharing all this, all these personal details. And I was like, what's going on? This is so, I was like, I hope they don't come to me. I don't want to share anything, <laughs> but I had to learn they, they do get their stories from what's being talked about in the room. So many times, um, just a little secret that I'm sharing with the world, many times when um, you see a great episode, it's probably coming from one of the writer's stories of their life. It's probably coming from something that really happened to them and they tweaked it a little bit for the story. Um, so yeah, trying to be a little bit more um, outgoing can help. We definitely have a lot of writers who are introverts um, and just working on that a tad might be beneficial, not to the point where you need to be fake um, or you need to be someone you're not, but maybe just meeting one extra person a day or you know, going on to a webinar or something where you can slowly start to come out of your shell just a little bit. That's what I would say. Um, what's been your biggest inspiration as a writer? And it can be a writer, it can be a TV show, a film, a play, your biggest inspiration and why? 
Ooh, that's a, <laughs> oh man, <laughs> I don't know if I'm, which is so funny because you're always asked like, oh, what's your favorite show? Or I, I don't know if I'm going to ask my favorite inspiration. Um, oh my gosh. I think, you know, I love, I love feeling like it's so funny. I, um, I just remember going to the movies with my dad and, you know, just even seeing like the bomb bond films and like giggling. Cause it's so, you know, like the ones, you know, nineties, it was more like camp, right? Like those bond films were a little bit more campy and um, just having it be enjoyment and seeing people like enjoying that experience together or um, mm -hmm. TV. Uh, I, I'm inspired by things that are like simultaneously joyful, but also smart. Um, yeah. So I think those are the things uh, that like, I mean, obvious, everyone's saying like Ted Lasso, <laughs> that's the big one right now too. But I mean, um, definitely and stuff like, um, Oh my gosh, I'm so sorry. I am forgetting names um, of titles of shows. But um, I think just anything, you know, it's so funny because as a kid, I loved reading. So like, you know, Anna Green Gables, like anything that just makes makes you feel like in an authentic way, I'm inspired by, whether it's a laugh or crying or inspirational, that always in inspires me. Um, uh, and just seeing people loving doing what they do um, and working together for a goal, which I, I don't know. I've heard a lot about that with like Ted Lasso. It's like they, the writer's room loves each other. You know, I just love that idea of, uh, yeah, that, that inspires me. I love that. Yeah. Um, oh my gosh. Um, what, what inspires me? Um, writing that scares me, inspires me. So specifically, when I see things that are so well done, in my opinion, because a writing is subjective, when I see things that are so well done that I go, oh, I could never, you know, I could go, whoa, that's, that's fantastic. How did they do that? Like, are there more than 26 letters in the alphabet? Because I mean, what is happening right now? You know what I mean? There's no way they could have done that with 26 letters. That's how I feel. Um, so um, there was a show called uh, Kings. It only got one season. I believe the writer was Michael Green. Still to this day, I'm just like, fantastic writing, fantastic writing. Um, R. R. Martin, yeah, George R. R. Martin, yeah. uh, um, Game of Thrones, just, I'm speechless when it comes to, and it's not even my, my type of genre, but the way that I write, I'm attracted to that, where it's dysfunction and family and, 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 um, it, it's so juicy. I can barely contain myself. I mean, that kind of writing where I'm just like, whoa, you know, that is, wow. I hope to get there. That inspires me. Um, I'm inspired by comedy that makes me laugh like open mouth, you know, not the, <laughs> that's funny, you know, but <laughs> open mouth, you know, um, um, so you have the script and you know that I'm, I talk about the script all the time. Um, and I think it's one of your, cause I always believe our next script is the best script. That's how I think. But you have a script that I laugh every time I read it. And I'm always Aww. telling you, somebody's going to buy the script. It's so good. It's so funny. And you know, what's interesting. And I just thought of this. What connects me with it, not only that it's funny and it's great, but there's a family, there's drama in it. Do you know what I mean? So even in that, I'm still, I know it's a comedy. I know it's that, um, but it, it draws me in because I feel like there's a lot of humor 
in drama. There's a lot of humor in pain. There's a lot of humor. I can see why a lot of comedians um, say what a lot of lot of people want to say but are scared to say, or they they say jokes that may be a little inappropriate or too fast for the time. There's a lot of humor in pain, you know. So, yeah, that inspires me. Um, you're so kind. And I also want to say that your script, you know how I feel about your, <laughs> your bishop. <laughs> it's so good. And that's, yeah, like, yeah, I'm so proud. I'm definitely Thank inspired you. by, I'm, I'm inspired by you as well, because you. for anyone listening, Gigi is an amazing person to listen to because she's kind and thoughtful and genuinely wants the best for you. Um, everything she says comes from a kind, honest place. Um, <laughs> and she's an amazing writer. So she knows what she's doing. <laughs> so listen. <laughs> dodge it down. Dodge it. Um, thank you for that. I appreciate you. Um, yeah, I'm inspired. I'm inspired by that. I'm inspired by... Um, things that make me want to be better. I really do view writing as a craft. Um, I think writers should feel powerful to use that title. Writer, you know what I mean? We we invent worlds. We make people feel better. Um, it's a beautiful thing. So I love, love, love being a writer. It, is, um, it just, it makes me smile. It makes me smile. Um, how can people contact you? I want to make sure we are getting you uh, thank, out there. Thank you. Um, and real quick before I, I just wanted to bounce off of what something that you said too, just because yeah. I know this is for like the new writers. Uh, yes. This is something I am so bashful about. Don't be afraid to use, because like you said, it's powerful to call yourself a writer. So don't be afraid to call yourself a writer, even if you haven't had something published or bought. Like, if you are doing the work, you are a writer. So let yourself be empowered by that. Um, if you're a new writer, be a little, I don't know. I'm always like bashful. I'm always like, ah, but I'm like, no, I need to get better about being, like Gigi said, being empowered by that. Um, so that'd be like my last little bit of advice that I also need to take. <laughs> um, but yeah, you can find me on Twitter at Margo, M-A-R-G-O-T, the French way, uh, newcomer. Um, yeah. I love that. And the, the um, last question for tips for people interested in writing in general, but uh, specifically writing for TV, um, for this episode, writing for TV, um, getting a, a job in TV, um, what, what tips would you give them if they're first starting out or, and have no idea what to do first? Um. Number one, watch a lot of TV. Watch things that you want mm -hmm. to write. In my, I mean, um, because I think you're going to learn like the cadences. Because then when you start to learn the structure, it'll already kind of be a little bit more ingrained, and you'll kind of know what. Like, you won't realize it, but it'll you'll definitely kind of instinctively know what works and doesn't work just from watching a lot of things that you've watched and what you like and don't like. Um, mm -hmm. The second thing is, yeah, just uh, always, I think, be searching out, like, how to be better, listening to as many different ways to get tools to write. And then thirdly, just write. Just always trying to be writing. And don't be hard on yourself when you write. Just be, I don't know, this is, a lot of these, this advice is just stuff that I tell myself. <laughs> but, like, um yeah, just just keep writing and um, enjoy, like, but also do it from, like, a joyful space. Because that's just mm -hmm. one thing that I've also realized, too. Like, if I'm forcing it too much and it's not joyful, it's, it's, um, it's usually not good. So, mm -hmm. yeah. So if you're a new writer, just try not to get discouraged. Do what you love. And, yeah, you can do it. I love that. Yeah. Have some encouragement. Feel empowered. Um, my last tip would be um, jump in. But I would say jump in um, with these with these little tips. Um, 
So if you're a new writer, as in you've never written a script before, but you want to, I would say once again, your local libraries, um, online, um, there's, there's scripts are everywhere. It doesn't have to be uh, the latest show on TV. Just find a script, a script, whether it's comedy, drama, uh, dramedy, it doesn't matter, uh, sci-fi, a script. Um, and then once you find a script, because I want you to see how it's written out, the formatting. Um, and then once you find a script, um, jump in. And I would say the tip is jump in with whatever experience you have. If you are, um, don't follow the trends. If you are a fireman, write a script about a fireman. Take us into that world. You have expertise that we don't have. And so when we read it, it's going to be so authentic. And if it's a comedy, it's a great comedy. If it's a if it's a um, drama, it'll be a great drama. If you are a paralegal, write your first script about a paralegal, <laughs> about a, a, fu a funny paralegal or something that happens to a paralegal that's funny. Um, Margot has a great script on swimming. She has the background in swimming. You know what I mean? It makes such sense. And nobody else um, probably has, there's not a lot of swimming um, um, scripts running around Hollywood. That's valuable. Sadly. I wish there was more. <laughs> but I mean, that's so bad. <laughs> so you know? So that would be my tip. Um, start from where you are. Write about, write from your experience. Um, and even if you don't have the structure down, you, you're, you're not the best at formatting. You're not the best at, at character development. Those things you can learn, but that script will be so much more um, readable because you're drawing us in with your experience. You can learn the other stuff, but start with that. And then you can always rewrite and make it better once you learn formatting and all those other things. That would be my biggest tip. Start from where you are. You can do this. You can learn to write. We value writers. I cannot say that enough. And I'm so grateful that the HAPS um, family was here on my first live stream. I'm so proud of myself. Thank you to Twitch. I can't see you, but if you are there, YouTube, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, thank you all for being here. I had such a good time with you, Margo. Thank you. I mean, Gigi, I always have a good time with you. Never, <laughs> never a negative experience getting to hang out with you. So thank you so much. I really appreciate it. And I hope, hope there was some helpful nuggets in there that I was able to give. <laughs> Absolutely. I hope they take it and run with it. My next episode of whatever this is going to be called, and let me say this before we get off, to all the audiences watching, please help me um, pick a title for this. I'm thinking maybe On the Rise, um, All Things Writing, um, The Writer's Room. What do you think out of those three? On the Rise, all Things Writing, The Writer's Room. I'd love to hear um, your suggestions, your picks, which one you like. Um, but either way, it'll always start with GGM Green. So you will see that and know my next episode is going to be um, with a award-winning director. And we're going to talk about All Things Writing again, how... Um, the writer and the director's relationship is, how the writing um, can help in the, the production um, process. What should a writer add to uh, the script? What should they not? What are some of the things a director looks for in the writing? So still talking about writing, but coming from a different perspective. Um, I am so grateful that you were here. I'm just, I can't say that enough. Thank you so much for joining me. And we are wrapping it up. So thank you. Thank you for being here, Margo. Thank you so much. Have a great day, everyone. Yes. And we will see you next time. Bye. <laughs>